Loch Moss has been kicked up. This is Man Tracker, an Alberta cowboy and an expert at catching human prey. Hey, sunshine! Today, it's his job to find these two, Jordan Thibault and Susie Willis. Susie's a student and is used to spending her days studying, but she's no stranger to the wild outdoors, having grown up in Kenya. Living in Kenya for my first seven years of life, I was encouraged to just go outside and play on my own, and the house we lived in had tons of wilderness around us, and there were monkeys in our backyard, so I'm pretty used to living outdoors and experiencing the outdoors. You have to have that certain knowledge that will help you survive, and uh, I think I have it. <laughs> I'm relying on Jordan for the direction sense. Uh, I'm terrible with math. Jordan has graduated, but he's always learning something new. I went to school for social work, and my passions are being in the outdoors. I love canoeing, I like hiking, rock climbing. Uh, starting to get into outdoor education fields, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm into breakdancing, and uh, me and my friends picked it up about four years ago, and we just uh, stuck with it, we loved it. Uh, it's not only a dance, it's an entire subculture, and it's also a high-intensity workout. They've been dating for a year, but they're confident their relationship can withstand the test ahead. We know we're going to be under the gun, we're going to be stressed, we're going to be tired, uh, but we already talked about what we're going to be doing, and I think at the end of the day, we realize that, you know, we're putting ourselves to the test, not the relationships. The manhunt is taking place in the Laurentian Mountains of Quebec. Hardwood forests, remote lakes, and rocky trails. But Man Tracker won't be hunting alone. He's got sidekick Daniel Locat to help him out. Trail guide and horse trainer, he's been riding the hills around Wrench Tromblon for over a decade. The fact that we're going to have to, uh, to go up and down a lot of time, OK, like a lot of hills, OK? Also, for sure, the bushes. For sure, the bushes will be a, a, big, uh, a big challenge for us. Uh, rocks it can be hard on the horses. They need good shoes also if you want to go through the trail, you know, like those spikes here. They grab into the rocks, OK? Make a good grip on the ground. It's going to be our secret weapon to chase them. It's going to be tough on the prey, but I think it's even tougher on the horses. Then my patience could wear a little thin. You never know. The prey have their map and compass and are ready to start. We're as ready as we're ever going to be, but, you know, it's starting to be real now. Man Tracker and his guide wait two kilometers away with no map, no compass, and no idea where the chase will begin or end. And it's already starting to rain. If it just rains a little bit, it'll be great. Tracking will be way better. Relax, buddy, you'll need that energy here. Let's go. Let's go. Now let's get this show on the road. For 36 hours, the prey will have to use every ounce of stamina they possess if they're to evade the man tracker while finding their way to the finish, a bridge 40 kilometers away. The prey start off on an open road. The ground is packed sand with little or no cover. Yeah, it's so we're getting up, so. <laughs> we gotta get to a spot where we're not making tracks. Yeah. Every footstep I made made a track, and it was terrifying. We wanted to get in the bushes right away to get off that road, just so that those tracks would disappear. I still want to get lost right at the beginning. Yeah. Want to cut through these woods to find that road? Yeah. The prey decide to walk through the bush parallel to the road. Well, he's not going to come up here in a horse. but then realized that it was a big mistake because you can't bushwhack the whole way. <laughs> this stuff should be saved till he's closer. Yeah. Go on this road yeah. and just make distance for right now. <laughs> if I kick rocks out of the way, will you be a deer and put them back for me? <laughs> <laughs> It's taken some time, but Daniel has led Man Tracker to what he believes to be the flare site. They look for signs. That's over here. What we're getting here is a lot of different uh, discolorations. 
We've got the white. It's all kind of white with a few water drops on it. It tells me that it's fairly fresh. This is almost like a toe kick. This has been pushed back. The tracks go in this general direction. I think this is the start. We're going right down the middle of the road. The trackers have got off to an easy start with the help of the terrain and the weather. We didn't go very far until we got into a huge gravel pit. Thankfully, they did leave fairly decent tracks, and it's not completely wet yet. And by the length of the stride, I'd say they're running. And right here, there's a smaller set of footprints, probably the girl. It's good. It's very good. If it rains harder, it would be to our advantage, but... You want to go this way? And just get time? Let's do it. We spent too much time at the beginning. Kind of lost their track on the road over there. Is there, are there a lot of trails in this area? Yeah, because uh, this country is uh, renowned for uh, cross-country skiing, and uh, there's trail all over the place. That's too bad. It's just a, it's a crapshoot for me because I have to check every exit. It takes an hour to ride around that huge old gravel pit. Well, I don't have here. I got nothing. Must have skirted around here. There's nothing that way. I've got to go at this end of the pit and see what's out here. A maze of trails and exit points has slowed the trackers down. Well, we've just checked out about six different trails in this gravel pit. We've got a bit of a track back there, but not much. It's the only avenue road that we haven't checked. Yeah, we got tracks here. Finally, we got a bunch of toe kicks right here coming up this hill. The gravel's loose and it's spinning out a little, which is good. Man Tracker finally has a definitive sign, but he's way behind the prey, who are already starting to run out of energy. I wish I'd train more. Uh, it's, it's a little bit tiring, but, but yeah, it's just one foot in front of the other. It kind of lowered my confidence a little bit because you don't think about what kind of physical shape you need to be in. And I was breathing hard and I was just thinking, like, if this is hard, what's going to be the rest of the chase? Backer. Oh, we have two tracks here, right there. Yeah. Big one, right there. Yeah, right on. It looks like an easy trail for the riders until the tracks disappear. I think they must have went the other way. Yeah, there's no tracks around here. Yep. Unless they, they use the bush. There is a trail going that way, isn't there? Yep. I think we'll stay on that trail. Sometimes the absence of a sign is as telling as any print would be. Man Tracker trusts his instinct. Yeah, I see the tracks there, buddy. Man Tracker will never expect to come to the trail. I've been looking for something to tell me they're going up this trail. There's a bunch of dirt disturbed here. The leaves are all mishmashed. There's dirt on the leaves. There's dry dirt showing. It's been a pretty good climb, and we ain't there yet, so probably where they stopped to take a bit of a breather. The chase is taking us up uh, to Montagne Noire, uh, which is quite renowned around here to be a nasty mountain, you know? For hikers, for skiers, for even for horse riders, you know? And for horses, lucky that we had uh, spikes on our shoes, because otherwise we would have just slip up, slip down, slip up, slip down all the time. Climbing up the summit was tough. It was physically tough. But we hadn't run into Man Tracker. He hadn't caught up to us. It was a hike in the woods. Road or trail? Trail, I think. Trail? West? Yeah. But Jordan and Susie aren't the only ones on the mountain. Hello, bonjour. And Jordan's ability to speak French comes in handy. Il y a des lacs par là, à quelques kilomètres, mais je sais pas. Okay. It's a chance to check their bearings and confirm their route, but Man Tracker is right behind them. On va à long distance. On va faire ça. You hear that? A bunch of people up there talking. Is it them? <laughs> Are they speaking French? Yeah, they're French, but it's not them. Okay. Thank you.
Jordan and Susie have successfully evaded their pursuers by jumping between bush and trail. But unbeknownst to them, their chat with the hikers has just blown their cover. We heard voices in the bush. We kind of finally figured out that they were speaking French. And then we heard a girl say, thank you. Thank you. Man Tracker heads towards the voices he's heard in the woods, while the clueless prey test their downhill muscles. I'm making good time, Jordan. <laughs> so we'll cross the road, and then get into the bush on the other side, and then we'll take another heading to see where we're going. OK, sounds perfect. Just have to be careful. West, north, south, so I don't know. The trackers are stumped. Now we'll check this one first. There's no one in the bushes. No snowshoes, bikes, horses, quads, or snowmobiles. I hope they don't catch us. We had taken a hiker's path down that said no horses allowed. So we figured we were safe, decided to make a fake little path across a road into another path. Make a clear path. Boom, boom, into that trail, and then go down there. Yards and then jump up and run. The prey don't stay on the trail, but instead head into the bush. But I thought my boots would get wet, maybe. <laughs> but I just sunk right in there. Jordan walked to the side, looked, took one look at me, and hopped over because he obviously knew by then how deep it was. So now you're camouflaged. <sighs> Jordan and Susie are distracted, and their trackers are rapidly gaining ground. There's the road right there. Yeah. Let's go as far as we can this way, and then hit the road, and then walk it. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's him. A what? That's him. What? That's someone on the road. We lost the end of that. Glad that. I could just hear the panic in her voice, and she changed moods in a flash. So that got me, that got me going. It was like I woke up. You realize that this isn't a joke anymore, and that they are on your tail now, and you have to start thinking right then. I think we go down the road, but it looks like they've this way. Damn it. The false tracks do their job and blew a man tracker onto the next trail. But the prey are hiding, paralyzed with fear. I'm sure not seeing nothing for tracks. I think I saw someone in the bushes over there. Is he here? Let's go check it out. I didn't know if he had seen me or not, but I was ready to hunker down there for a long time. He's nervous. I don't know why he's nervous like this. My heart's gonna feel something. I don't know. Yeah, he's in there for sure. I'd like to get a look at these pair. Show them that we're right on their asses. Wanna try to go down? No, we're not going through that. As soon as we go in there, we lose the advantage. Probably heard us by now. They're in there watching us somewhere. See, your horse just saw something. down here a ways, find another open spot, see if they come to us. 
With the trackers in hiding down the road, Jordan and Susie blaze a trail through the woods, bypassing the potential ambush. There's still a long road ahead. Yes. <laughs> Man Tracker's ambush plot hasn't gone to plan, but Daniel has some good news. One guy's went up and over there. Does this road take Yeah, yeah, I think this is a they take the shortcut, but it should take the, uh, the road we can go. Right there, yeah. We need to be in between those two lakes and start heading south. Let's do it. Let's do it, let's go. Confident of their direction, the prey head into the bush, where it's harder to check your bearings. Ooh, the tracks are doing nothing. Oh, that's good. Orienteering definitely during this is tough. When you're being chased and you have all these different elements, I mean, you don't even know what part you're in. Like, you've never seen a topographic map before of the area. I think we should go this way. OK. Hold on. It doesn't take long for you to forget, OK, have I gone 50 meters in? Have I gone 100 meters? Am I north, south of where I just was? So you're always readjusting and you're always trying to figure out your new location. All those comments I made about making good at that kind of stuff. We've got no tracks here at all, but what we do have is a whole bunch of dirt on this leaf that's very, very fresh. It's nice and dry. I don't see where the track is been that made the dirt get here, but somebody has stepped in this area here and transferred that dirt onto that leaf. Gives me a definite direction of travel. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Just want to make sure we're heading the right direction. We're heading north right now. Now we're coming up to a three-way. Oh, we got lots of disturbance there. These guys are probably running up and down every damn trail, making me check every one. Why can't anybody build a goddamn trail that goes straight? Oh, they got to frickin' fork it off 12 ways. Well, we got disturbance there, but I think we got more disturbance this way. How you doing? Doing good. I got a track. I got a visual here. I can see him coming up through the trees. They're right there, I can see him. It's been eight cold, wet hours, and Jordan and Susie have realized how easy it is to get lost in the woods and still manage to leave a clear trail for Man Tracker to follow. Well, they're coming out. They're coming out. They came out, and I think they just ran back in. There's no way we can catch them here. If they jump 10 feet off the road, they're in a big rock. All I want to do is scare the living out of them. Piss me off.
I looked up and saw a horse just out of the corner of my eye, and by that time, I was trained. Uh, I knew horse meant run, and we booked it into the trail. Eagle Eye Susie could pick this guy out out of nowhere. Uh, she looked up, she spotted him, and that's when we made a decision that we had to run down towards the lake. Oh, they are. They're right there. They're right there. Buggers were down below us. Well, I think they have gonna have to go like to follow the shore of the lake. Eh? That's the only way. Man Tracker has prevented the couple from taking the easy route. Sure, sure, sure. This is a bad. Oh, maybe not. But now he has to keep track of them from the road. We're on a, quite a high hill right here. They're right on the edge of the lake, and we're actually paralleling them on this road. Oh, she just saw us. Yeah. Now we see just what they look like, eh? Yeah. Blue backpack, blue coat. She looks like she's cold. They're running. We kept loping along beside the trail on the road up top. And then they disappeared. And we thought, where'd they go? And I, I, the first thing I thought of, they're going to steal a boat and go across the lake or borrow a boat or get a ride or something, and then I'm hooped. I got to go all the way around. We went down the river, and that was pretty terrifying because every step you took, it was slippery, and we were falling in, and the water was freezing. Man Tracker has lost sight of his prey, but he knows he has them trapped between the road and the lake. down this road here for the last 10 minutes. There's no sign of a human on this thing whatsoever. How you doing, old man? <laughs> I'm getting that stuff now. <laughs> country for catching, that's for sure. If they're gonna take the prey by surprise, the trackers have to make a move at some point. Let's just do it here. Let's just see. went the general direction. Well, there's a gray stump up there that isn't moving, and I just rode straight at it. I thought, you buggers, you're hiding right there. I got within 10 yards of him, and he finally jumped up and said a few choice words and left when it was just too steep to follow, so. I'm gonna break up here. So we can rest. Okay. Holy crap. What's big bushing? Doing up the hill whimpering. He was grunting pretty bad. It's quite a hill they just climbed <laughs> at a high rate of speed. They can't risk taking the horses along the rocky slope in the fading light. Once they took off up the hill, I talked to Danielle about it, and he said there's nothing up there but cliffs and swamps. So uh, we thought that's a good place to leave them. They're still going uphill. They're still having to work, and they're going to get cliffed out. And Yeah, it's a good place to leave them in the middle of the crap. 
The climb has taken its toll on the prey, but they know they can't go back down. Their only escape route lies further uphill and out of man track as grasp. But as luck would have it, they spot shelter ahead. It looked like a bear had torn the crap out of it, but it was out of the weather, it was out of the rain, and it was someplace that we could set up camp for the night. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. <laughs> Woo! Coming home, baby. It was like Goldilocks and the bears. You come across the perfect cabin you need. Man, we made it this far. <laughs> we'll keep running. We'll think on our feet, man. That's what we did all day. For tomorrow, though, we need to remember that he can't get through bushes. <laughs> and not to pretend to be rocks when he's, like, <laughs> five feet away. As good a place as any to make camp. We didn't go out on that uh, mountain on that night because uh, First of all, it was bushy and uh, slippery for the horses. I knew that uh, the only way to get out of there was on that trail. And the other side of the mountain was the big cliff. No way out. I've about had enough of this rain. It's going to be a wet night. You can just stop anytime. Getting up in the morning, it was cold in the cabin, and I didn't want to get up. I wanted to bury my head in the sleeping bag and let him find us at that cabin, because I was tired, my legs hurt. I had kind of lost the motivation to win. It's quite an adventure, I'll tell you that. Another chapter in our lives, so, yeah. Suze, I love you, um, and good luck to the both of us for our date number two. Jordan's been amazing, uh, just in high spirits and just keeping me going. I was ready to almost give up, so he's been amazing. I started to think about it more and realized that, yeah, I did, I did want to go on. I wanted to keep moving because I knew how much it meant to Jordan to keep going. The trackers start day two, where they last set eyes on their prey. The only way down is on this side of the mountain because the, uh, the other side is a cliff, so there's no way they can get out of there. I'm going to set up a track trap right here, and then we'll go this way. We'll check out this trail and let the track trap check that one out. Basically, it's a, a third person. I'm using Mother Nature to watch the trail for me while we go the other way to check out the other trails. We're going to be able to see if there's any tracks on there. If they do figure it out that it's me, they have to go up and around here. It's all rock with this moss and stuff. They're probably going to make some kind of a mark coming down there if they go around this. If they have to go down that way, they might go back and cut through, but they're going to leave a lot more trail in there than they are on this. We're just going to go up this trail and check out the rest of these trails, see if they've come down this way. Okay, okay. So the whole way down the trail in the morning, it was completely, completely covered by leaves. I mean, there was a, a good fall. The rain had brought down a lot of leaves the night before. Whoa, stop, 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 stop. And then we got to the end of one trail, and there was this just bare ground. And it looked kind of suspicious to us. We didn't, we didn't know what it was. He could be anywhere. Watch twigs. But just to be safe, we decided to, you know, not take the dirt. We decided to go around it. See anything up here? No, nope, no, nope, nothing. I didn't see nothing back there either. Let's go check out our track trap. Well, sure. That's definitely horse. That's pretty fresh, too. It's not old, that's for sure. OK. It's not fair. Keep your eyes out. Uh, we see him here. Duck that way. Oh, it looks like maybe they saw us. Something's gone right through here. Oh, yeah, we got footprints right there where somebody skidded down. The bugger saw that trap. Oh, well. 
we still know they came down there and they went this way. They didn't go that way. So we're going downhill. That worked great. What's down there? A lot of trails down there. And for sure, we're going to go across. There's a big ranch down the hill there. We just went around it. But you know what? The tracker is wise also. We went down to the bushes, and you saw a big footprint right beside it. So that's it. It was a track trap. And yeah, right here, so they come out. They rolled that rock right over, too. Must have been in a hurry. I'm going to trail around. It's not one of these two trails, so. Just keep it bearing until we find another trail. Look at he'll come up this trail. Right there. Over there. Let's get him. Let's go, buddy. Come on, big guy. On the way down the mountain, the prey avoided the trap set by Man Tracker, but they left a clear trail for him to follow, and it's led him straight to them. Yeah. There they are. God damn it, what are they doing going through there? There's a perfectly good trail right here. Damn, that was thick. <laughs> Where are they going to get to? Going that way. We're going to cross uh, right uh, the lands of the big ranch I told you about. OK. The only way to go is this way or the way back. The way back is going to lead us to the same place. OK. Is that way quicker? This way is quicker. OK, let's go that way. <laughs> I heard galloping. Uh, most frightening sound I think I've ever heard. Um, without even looking back, I just dove right down to where Susie was, down into this little gully. The strides are stretched out, and I just knew, like, something's up. So I just started running to... The prey are desperate for a plan to escape from Man Tracker. Did you hear? They hear a mock cattle drive run by a local rancher. It's basically tourists pretending to be cowboys for the day. Sounds like people and cows. The way they were going, they should come out up on the trail here somewhere. You can hear the cow coming in. The rainbow is going to hear them. After debating it, after being very, very cautious, we decided that quite possibly we could use these cows to our advantage. What's better to cover up our tracks than those guys?
It's late afternoon on day two, and Jordan and Susie have managed to escape Man Tracker's grasp, but they've run straight into a pond. Meanwhile, the trackers are going to have to guess exactly where their prey will be heading. Thank freaking God you have I knew it great before. eyesight. I knew he'd do something. Thank God you saw him. I saw the cowboy hats and I saw the slickers that they wear, and I just put two and two together at that point and looked up and I thought, that's him. That's him. It has to be stood out like sore thumbs. If they keep coming over that hill, are they going to hit this trail? We have to go this way. OK, let's go. At this point, we're really strategizing on how we're going to catch them, where we want to catch them, where are we able to catch them. We kind of stayed to the main trails, trying to be as quiet as we can. We'd stop and we'd listen, because they these guys were making a ton of noise in the bush. Can you hear something? We can't sit and look and match all the time. We've got to take a general, okay. a general way. Where are we going? Still going. We're still going west. They gotta come out over here somewhere. Bushwhacking, we're going faster than going on those roads. Because yeah. we're so scared out there. I hate roads. I really do. Let's go. The repeated sightings of Man Tracker have Susie on edge. And the thought of traveling on an open road is terrifying her. We gotta make some ground. We've evaded them how many times already? Susie just did not want to see another trail. She was shaken up, she was beat up. I don't think she could emotionally handle at that point being on a trail. We don't have to go on the road if you don't. But we gotta keep moving. I just couldn't handle going back on a trail or a road because that anxiety, that anticipation that you get. I think that's the worst thing. It's not when you see him, it's that anticipation where your stomach's in knots. I hated feeling like I was always followed, always, always watched. What do we got here? Those guys are coming down that hill right there, right? Shortcut this way. Okay, let's go across there. Is that the road down there? I'm going to see. Oh, it could be down there soon. I hear people, so we should be close to the road. Where do we go now? Well, we go this way. Plenty of trail around here, I'm telling you. Okay, so if the road is right down there, if we start heading north this way, we'll be going along the road, but we won't be on it. Jordan and Susie have a strategy to get to the finish, but it's still five kilometers away. I gotta try to find a place in there. Go. Daniel, I can hear them over there. I'm trying to get around them. The trackers plan to surround their prey in the open forest before they can escape into the dense bush below. Man Tracker closing in, Jordan and Susie have to think fast. Backtrack and then cross. Backtrack, cross road. They only have one option, to backtrack through the forest to the other side of the road. Come here, come here. Backtrack. Yeah. Daniel, go back down the road. Go back down. Now 
it's a case of hide and seek. The prey hide, waiting for their chance to run out of the trees. While Man Tracker seeks them out, searching the forest around them, as his sidekick guards the road below. Pleasure. Susie? Susie. Good to meet nice you. To meet. Uh, I thought for sure that the horse wouldn't be able to run through that. The, the man's coming through the woods just as fast as we were. I took 10 steps uphill, and there was these two pair of these stumps hiding in the bush again. So they got up and took off, and this time I was close enough that I wasn't going to let both of them get away. So one of them was going to get caught. I didn't care which one. He made a, a circle around us and he basically came almost right out on top of us. By the time we looked up, he was right there. It was game over. 99% of the time, people in that situation are gonna split up. Whether it's a strategy or it's like survival of the fittest or what, they're gonna split up and bugger off. But these guys, I guess, they're stuck together like two birds in a horse's tail, and it works to my advantage to have them stay together because I can catch them both at the same time. And this is my sidekick, sidekick Daniel. Daniel, yeah, pleased to meet you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, without him, you guys would still be free. <laughs> <laughs> It was tough to lose to him. It was, it was a tough cookie to swallow, that's for sure. Having him peer down over us and just, just that smug look of, this is over, this is game over for you, and I have another notch in my belt. I hated it. I mean, because I was, I was a stubborn one. I wanted to win. I wanted to see the end. I wanted to see the finish line. 